Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Pagey here once again with another video on DC TV that sort of somehow connects to DC film stuff. So maybe today from when this video will come out, I'm not sure exactly when this video is coming out, but maybe today, maybe tomorrow, whatever it is, the Blue Beetle film hits theaters in most places around the world. Uh, or as I said, maybe it's tomorrow or the day after that, depending on where you live. Or if you're like me and live in Australia and or New Zealand, you are waiting another month or so until the middle of September, as that is when it releases over here for some weird reason. I think we're the only two countries who get it in the middle of September and not over the next couple of days. I think it's because of the FIFA Women's World Cup as to why it is coming out a month later. Though I don't know why that would be the reason, but that's what has been said, or at least I've seen that. Anyway, it's out in most places either today or tomorrow, so feel free to go watch it. But did you know they were planning a live action TV show for Blue Beetle over 10 years ago? Well, yeah. And I've mentioned this in the past when talking about some other DC shows that never were or never moved past the pilot stage, like that Aquaman TV show, for example. But I've never talked specifically in focus about this cancelled Blue Beetle show and even shown some stuff around it. So that's what we're going to be doing today in this video. Now, this wasn't during the reign of the Arrowverse. This, isn't, this wasn't going to be an Arrowverse show. This was put into development during the day of the days of Smallville. Smallville was still on the air. Smallville would have been airing, or just finished airing its ninth season, I think, around the time that this was being discussed. And if this show did happen, it might have either meant that the Arrowverse wouldn't have happened the way it did, or this would have been the start of the new DC universe that took shape on the CW following Smallville, because Smallville was entering its final season. Uh, you know, Blue Beetle, you know, Blue Beetleverse, it doesn't have the same ring as Arrowverse to me, but maybe some might like it. So back in 2010, I think this was around June, I think it was, Jeff Johns, who was the uh, the chief creative officer at DC Entertainment at the time, tweeted out a couple of things. Firstly, he said, Blue Beetle news from DCE or DC Entertainment. We have a live action test of Jaime, uh, Jaime Reyes' scarab activating his suit. It is awesome. And then he followed with this. If I can break it out of the vault, I'll bring it to SDCC or San Diego Comic-Con live action Blue Beetle. But, you know, what about that test footage of Harmy Reyes, you know, and his Blue Beetle? Well, it's out there. Let's watch it. A reminder, before we watch it, this is test footage from back in 2010. So, forgive the CGI. It wasn't even a show from back in 2010. It was low-budget test footage to maybe get a show made. So, just give it some slack. But here we go. Let's watch it. So as you can see from the test footage here, they went full on Blue Beetle with it, with the scarab being bonded to Jaime's, you know, spine and all that, and, and just pushing that while Jaime is overall in control, the scarab can push the envelope if you want to put it and get things done, which is seen firsthand when the scarab sort of activates after hearing criminal events on the police radio whilst Jaime is sleeping and then waking him up. The suit looks pretty cool in my opinion at the very least, and even the transformation part looks pretty decent for test footage from 2010. And the fact it didn't happen I find sort of surprising because around the same time, Young Justice was about to come out about, I think it was later that year, and so it would have been development, they would have been animating it, they would have been recording all the voices and stuff like that, so they knew what was happening. And of course, Hami Reyes's uh, Blue Beetle was a fan favorite character on that show there, but maybe it was just unlucky timing, maybe if this test footage was put out maybe a year later, then maybe it could have sprung on the momentum of, Ju of Young Justice and had, you know, and actually been something, but that's a what if situation, like who knows. 
But this wasn't the end of the Blue Beetle TV story, though this live action series did not get picked up, the character did end up appearing in live action on TV only about a year or so later. But yeah, it was about like a year or so after Jeff Johns' original tweets teasing the project, and of course, this was on Smallville, this appearance. Now, this was in the 18th episode, it's like the fourth last episode, I think it was, of season 10, so yeah, it happened in one of the last handful of episodes ever in that show, as of course, Smallville ended in season 10, and this episode was entitled Booster, and funnily enough, it was actually written by Jeff Johns himself, but also directed by Clark Kent from Smallville himself, Tom Welling. And as you would guess from the title, this is the episode in which we meet Booster Gold from the future, but also where a run-in with Booster Gold due to being saved by him sets Jaime on a path to a journey with the Scarab that will turn him into Blue Beetle, which crawls into his backpack after escaping due to the incident in which Booster Gold saves him. Now, not ignoring the elephant in the room with this, because it's a big elephant and a big suit to ignore, especially when comparing it to the test footage that we watched a bit earlier, but the suit in Smallville for Blue Beetle, yeah, it isn't great. It isn't great. Even at the time, it wasn't great. Like, I remember watching it when it aired back in the day, because I watched Smallville when it was coming out, and I was watching it thinking, uh, yikes, uh, that ain't great. But this was back in 2011, and it was only for one episode. This is, like, one episode that both Booster and Blue Beetle appear. They were never going to design something super or overly elaborate and detailed and just, well, overly appealing on the eye. I mean, could it have been better? 100%. But I think they also sort of wanted to play into like the, like the mechanics of the Beetle and everything, like the suit when it, you know, takes shape. Um, but yeah, it could have been a bit better. But I understand why it wasn't very good. It was only for one episode. If this was like a half season arc, you'd probably get a much better suit. Maybe not amazing, but at least better than what was on the episode. But... I think at the time people were fine with it, but at the same time you're like, uh, it's not that good. But anyway, you live with it, you die with it, whatever. But in regards to this test footage and the show that never happened, the suit would have 150 million percent been better in the actual show if it happened, because they would have put a decent budget towards just the suit itself, because it would have been the main character's most worn item over whatever amount of episodes it would have been. The suit design in the test footage is great in my opinion, and would have been a good one to use, with a bit better VFX for the most part. However, of course, in the actual show, when they would have been filming whatever scenes it would have been potentially, like a physical suit would have definitely been made, uh, just way less bulky than the suit from Smallville, and you'd maybe hope that it would play into sort of, you know, they could have maybe done like sort of like, like Nightwing on Titans, where it's a bit of like Lycra, but it's black, so it looks a bit like armored and stuff, and then of course just do like the helmet and the arms and stuff like that. I mean, you could have definitely made it work. Uh, it just would have been very interesting to see like in a 2011, 2012 show what it would have looked like. But then again, like you had some shows like Flash and stuff that were only a couple of years later and they did some decent stuff. So maybe it wouldn't look too bad. But pretty much on the Jaime so like story side of the Smallville episode, if you haven't seen the episode, it really is about him gaining control over the Scarab and everything like that. I mean, the Scarab is essentially the, like, the villain of the episode, if you want to put it, and Jaime gaining that control over the Scarab is the victory, which Booster does assist in, and does play into the whole, like, boost, uh, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold friendship in the comics, with Booster playing sort of, like, a mentor role of sorts, and that being teased as something that will continue going forward. But in regards to the events of about a year earlier, with that test footage and those tweets from Jeff Johns, it, it is just one of those things where either the studio or network that it was aimed on met like the CW. I don't know if it was actually specifically aimed for the CW. I think they would have just been, you know, shopped around. But I mean, Smallville was there, like the CW. So I think it probably would have been on the CW. It just seemed, especially with Harmy, if he was like, um, like a teen character, it makes sense it would have been on the CW. But, you know, I guess just the various parties or one specific party that was important to it just wasn't interested in it and just was like, nah, we don't see a potential for it. Or maybe they thought it would be too hard to make as a TV show, too expensive, especially if like the suit transformation is all VFX, you have to do a lot of VFX stuff. So I can sort of understand that. And I mean, that happens more than you would think, especially back then in the early, like late 2000s or early 2010s. And now, the, but like, but now when you look at it, there is like streaming services everywhere. I mean, there's more streaming services than goddamn network channels. So there are just more avenues for shows to go down compared to back then. But I mean, would the show have had potential? Yeah. And of course, there's all the whole like Ted Court aspect. I mean, Ted Court appears in that Smallville episode. So there is like the different Ted Court aspects, which I'm sure they're going to dive into the movie. Like, like Harmony is not the first Blue Beetle. There's a history of Blue Beetles. And I'm sure the show would have potentially tied into that as well and explored it. Um, and also would have probably expanded and included villains from other uh, heroes, you know, because Blue Beetle doesn't have like a ridiculously deep roster. 
but maybe had, you know, a Blue Beetle villain as the main villain, but then some of the villains of the week were like sort of what we saw in Arrow when like Deadshot or something would appear. So um, I'm sure that's what they would have done, but it would have been a very cool thing to see. Um, even just for curiosity's sake. It makes you wish they at least got a pilot episode so you at least could see what they were aiming for. But all we have for what they were planning here at the very least is the test footage. And though it's decent, you know, it's all we got. So unfortunately, that's it. But thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like on it. And also let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of the test footage. Would you have liked a Blue Beetle show? Or do you think it's better suited for a movie? As I said, it's coming out in the next couple of days, depending on where you live. Um, or maybe today from where you live. Depending... <laughs> Depends, I guess, where you live. But um, yeah, let me know, you know in the comment section down below your various thoughts. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.